this is an entire computer in a box. Not really, this is an ITX motherboard, but it comes with a processor and cooling just to add fan and RAM and storage. 16 cores, yeah, 16 cores. This is the 7945HX, it's the mobile 16 core, but it's fully unlocked so we can dump a lot of power into it and an ITX form factor. This is really similar to the BD770i that we did a video on previously, but what you may not know is this system has been running continuously in our footage ingest station. So like when I record something and I've got two or three or four micro SD cards, this is the machine that it goes into. Also, when I need to do BIOS B-roll or capture a machine on the workbench, this has got a capture card in it and that's what I use for capturing videos. So this has been running continuously since that video. Now, eight cores, yeah, it'd be nice to have a little bit more horsepower. These are on sale on Amazon, 7945HX. This is basically the same setup, but 16 cores instead of eight, and uh, I couldn't help myself. So we've also got a mini swarm screwdriver and a charging stand thing. We'll use the thing to put the thing together, so. Basically, you get this and some RAM. Just add this. This is the P12 Max. This is an excellent choice, 120 millimeter cooling fan. And you're good to go, because it's already got the heat sink. Boom, you're good to go. Oh, and I almost forgot, the other fun thing we're gonna do with this video is uh, shove a 5090 in it and see how it performs. Because, woo, 5090. So the BD795SE, okay. This is not a 9800X3D, it's a 7000 series Zen 4 and a desktop series Zen 4 is gonna perform better. But the whole package here, motherboard, CPU, and everything is surprisingly affordable. There's definitely some trade-offs if you go this route. I mean, first of all, this is not as full featured as a desktop motherboard. BIOS updates may be a concern. If you look at our motherboard layout here, it takes two DDR5 SODIMs. Uh, DDR5 5200 is officially supported. You can overclock DDR5 5600 but you could be running DDR5-6000, which is the sweet spot on Zen 4. It's a trade-off. It's also two 2280 M.2s here. This version of the board doesn't include the bundled M.2 heatsink, which I think is okay. Most M.2 come with a heatsink these days. We've got our one PCI Express X16 slot. Now they advertise this as X PCIe Gen 5. We're gonna test that with the 5090, but I think it's safer to say PCIe Gen 4, because I have some other versions of this board and the other versions of this board before Gen 5 was really available using Gen 5 storage. It would work with Gen 5 storage, but uh, Gen 5 can be a little a little tricky to get working. Also got our single eight pin power input. We've got an E-key M.2 here for your Wi-Fi solution. There is no Wi-Fi bundled with this motherboard, so that'll be an extra expense. And you also have three four pin fan headers, one of which we're gonna use for our Arctic P12 Max. Standard 24 pin power connector, standard 20 pin USB front panel, five gigabit connector. You've only got the one type C port, which will also double as a display port. So it's a display port for the integrated GPU plus USB type C. Then you got display port and HDMI, two type A ports, and then you got two USB 2.0 ports underneath your two and a half gig Realtek LAN. And then you've got your you know standard three, three and a half millimeter audio output ports. The CMOS battery is this, this, this type where you have to get the, the battery packaged in plastic. It's not easily removable and replaceable unless you have a soldering iron versus the standard pop-in 2032. But still, this is a ridiculous amount of horsepower, 16 cores. Also included in the box, you've got some mounting hardware for this P12 Max fan that we're gonna use, the mounting hardware for your wireless adapter to come out the rear I.O. and your rear I.O. shield. Purchased separately, the Minis Forum Tool Accessory. This is a powered screwdriver. Precision electric screwdriver. Right. Listen, my sole purpose in life has become to fart around with technology. I'll take it. Now, Arctic sent me some of these, but I like them so good I bought a whole bag from Micro Center. This one, this one seems to be one of the ones from Micro Center because I've got the little referral sticker. The thing about this screwdriver is it's got some extra long bits. This is also compatible with the uh, LTT Store screwdriver. LTT Store. I don't know. I'm gonna have to 3D print my own. Pixel cleaning is being processed. Oh, I let it sleep too long. Now we just need to install the rear I/O as well. It takes a couple of screws to hold it in. And then you've got a built-in rear I/O shield. 
Uh, it's USB-C charging on a screwdriver, by the way. Now, before we mount this in a small form factor machine, which will be hard to get at, let's set it up on a test bench. I have here my trusty kit of 96 gigabytes of crucial DDR5 memory. We're gonna, yeah, set this thing up, 16 core of 96 gigs of memory. Might as well go all in with all the money we saved on the motherboard, right? I mean, this is cheaper than a 7950X, and to be sure, it is gonna be slower than a 7950X, but it's still 16 cores and a pretty significant power envelope. And you can still expect pretty extreme performance, because, you know, 16 cores. I mean, it's two chiplets. I also really like that some of the wash from this one 120 millimeter fan washes over the M.2 on the edge of the board here. That's great. All right, All right we got a power supply situation. Good to go. Now, our initial DDR5 training, it's gonna take a little while. That's normal. Should, should boot right up, should wake up. If it doesn't for some reason, pop the GPU out and try it with the iGPU. That's always a good thing to do for diagnostics. Another clue is you can look for the numlock light on your keyboard to light up and the uh, lights on your LAN port to start blinking. That's also another clue that, hey, this is waking up. And it woke up. Good job, Manny's Forum. Well, let's run some diagnostics and benchmarks. Well, shocker, if you're gonna play at 400 FPS at 1080p, uh, yeah, 9800X3D is gonna be faster. But if you're playing at 1440p or 4K, the performance fall off is much less significant, which means that you can play at 4K with your 5090 and not suffer too much of a performance penalty. Yes, you can do your 4X frame gen. Yes, you can, you know, you could you just go completely nuts. You will be a little bit more CPU bottleneck on this CPU than you would on the equivalent desktop machine. I don't know that I would really actually recommend if you're going to buy a 5090, you buy this platform. A 5090 costs four times as much as the entire rest of the system. That's kind of nuts, isn't it? I mean, think about it. Okay, three times more anyway. Well, it depends on if you get at retail or what they're going for uh, in February of 2025, because you know it should be it should be like two thousand dollars for for that. Uh, could you run a 5080 on this platform? Yes, <laughs> this might be the most economical way to run a 5080, which is absurd. Uh, you would get more performance out of your 5080 from a better platform. I mean. This thing doesn't even have SATA ports. It's literally the meme. It's like, look at me, I'm the computer now. The, the GPU's pointing to the, the, the motherboard. But this would tide you over for a year or two until the next next thing comes along. Maybe you're holding out until 2026 until Intel has got something to really challenge the 9800X 3D. I don't know, we'll see. Out of the box, my latency was 98.4 nanoseconds. You can tune that. On this platform, fiddling with it, I was able to get it down to around 75 nanoseconds. This is also DDR5-5200. Most of the time, you can get a DDR5-5600 overclock, even using some uh, gamer sodium memory, which is harder to come by. I couldn't get it stable at DDR5-6000, which kind of makes sense, because ultimately, this is a mobile part. It's not meant to do that. It's meant to be relatively low power. We can see from our hardware info 64 here that the temperatures are looking good even after, you know, trying to get this thing to throttle. I only got it up to about 75 degrees C, which is a fantastic temperature for this platform. Remember in a laptop configuration, it sort of wants to run at like 90 degrees C all the time because it doesn't run the fan and that saves battery and it just you know, but in this configuration, in this physical configuration, you don't have to suffer with that. And so it works a little bit better. And seeing the temperatures as they are here is really good, especially when we look at the wattage column, we can see that the CPU was bursting up to 75, 80 watts for the system on chip total power. So power limitations are not really holding us back on this platform. Here's our Geekbench result, which you can see is a little bit worse than the desktop counterpart, but about where we would expect for a 16 core mobile part. You can also see our CPU Z results. You can also see our Gaming performance in Cyberpunk 2077, yeah, it's a little worse than what we covered in launch day. Yeah, it's a little worse than a 9800X3D, but again, for 5090, it really sort of holds its own. I'm not sure what else to say. This is the BD795i SE motherboard from Mini's Forum. It's neat. It's a lot of fun to play with. I'm not gonna be running this configuration with a 5090 normally. I'm actually going to end up pairing this probably, well, I mean, it's really weird, isn't it? If you do the benchmarks, it's like 5090, 4090, 5080. And historically, like the, the 4080 was better than the 3090, so 
Uh, it's a little, a little, little bit of a strange situation. I was very surprised that I didn't run into any PCIe 5 glitching or errors, at least as reported by GPU-Z and you know, just, let, just letting it run Furmark and cook itself overnight. That was very surprising. So, uh, you know, overall, not really a lot to complain about here. I mean, it's a lot less expensive, but they have cut everything to the bone. It's basically just a carrier card for your 16 core CPU. And there's not a ton of USB ports. There's not a ton of extra connectivity you'd get on a desktop board. I don't know how many times I have to emphasize that. I just want you to understand, but this platform is piloting our 5090 just fine, which is again, absurd, not something I would actually recommend you do in a real world scenario, but it just goes to show if you just turn it up to 11, it can do it mostly. And I love that. It's fantastic. All right. If you want to see a build with this or have me test anything, hit me up in the forum. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.